I'm back for another round about the Collatz conjecture, and uh, I wanted to change my approach a little bit and talk about the even numbers as well as the odd. And it turns out this is useful um, in the case I'm going to describe, which is mainly about uh, multiples of three um, in sequences, which can only start sequences and even odd. Uh, sequences, but um, actually poses a problem uh, in the odd-only sequences in the sense that um, there does not appear to be a, a point of convergence, um, but there is, but it's much easier to see it actually because of an artifact of the even-odd sequences. So I'll try to explain it. It's a little bit confusing. I may already have confused you. So uh, we know that, obviously, multiplying by 3 and adding 1 means no multiple of 3 can be in a 3x plus 1 sequence, except to start the sequence. If that's true, uh, yeah, why do we consider the sequence that begins with 27, for example, divisible by 3? Well, the conjecture permits any odd number as the first number of a sequence. Uh, whether it says that explicitly or not, um, that is the case. Uh, however, the first number of a sequence is completely arbitrary, and that's the point I've been making all along, that, you know, pretending a certain number is the beginning of a sequence is absurd. All sequences begin in infinity and then converge onto one. So there are an infinite number of numbers that could uh, start the sequence. So why do we suppose that 27 can only be the first number in a sequence? It just appears to people who consider the even numbers as well as the odd, that 27 does not have a previous step. So, uh, so if we go with that assumption, and that's because we don't see 27 in any other sequence, doesn't matter what sequence it is, doesn't matter if it's even 109, which I'll get to, it does not appear, 27 does not appear. So uh, so if we go with that assumption, uh, which is based on an artifact of the 3x plus 1 function, uh, we um, even if we do that, we can understand what's happening. So let's look again at 109. And we see uh, that it multiplied by 3, it's th and add 1 is 328, and then we have it twice, and then we come to 41. So 27 is missing. However, if we look at 27 and we multiply by 3 and add 1, we get 82, and then we divide by 2, we get 41. So here we are, 41 in both sequences. The rest of the sequence is the same. For all intents and purposes, they are the same sequence. The only odd number, there is no odd number between, the only odd number between 109 and 41 is 27. But 27 cannot appear in the conventional sequence. But we know it's the same sequence because it continues with 41. So that is uh, my contention, and it's much stronger in the contention. It's based on this property that four that a sequence repeats itself when you multiply the first number by 4 and add 1. It repeats itself in the sense that you're just, with an even-odd sequence, you're appending even numbers to the sequence, and you're removing the last odd number and replacing it with a new odd number. So 27 is being replaced by 109, and then we're adding two additional even numbers before the 82. See, they both have an 82. We're, we're, so we're prepending two even numbers, and then we're removing the odd number 27 and adding the odd number 109. So um, as I've shown, illustrated in several previous uh, videos, uh, there are three cases for sequence convergence. Actually, there are three cases, period, for the input output of any sequence, and that is the three I'm showing here. And I'm going to define the third case as the common case. And 
the common case is when we subtract one from n and multiply by a quarter. Now this the, has an inverse, which is the one I just mentioned, four n plus one. So they are reciprocal in the sense of um, uh, in the sense of sequences, they're reciprocal. The third case is the common case because the inverse 4n plus 1 can be applied to every number, every number, without limitation, whereas uh, whereas m minus 1 times a quarter can only be applied to numbers that are, uh, that are can only apply to numbers which minus 1 are divisible by 4. Um, Okay, so 109 minus 1, 108 divisible by 4 is 27. So that only applies to 1 in 4 numbers, but every number can be multiplied by 4, obviously. So, uh, yeah, we always have two cases for every number, arbitrarily the first in a sequence. And so this is essentially the proof point for the conjecture. Uh, first case, so for 167, we have two different inputs, 111 and 669. So 111 is the first case, uh, which is effectively multiplication by 1.5. So you add 1 to 111, you get 112, and um, you um, multiply by 1.5 and you get one uh, and then you subtract one and you get 167. So in the common case is uh, minus one divided by four, 167, it's both, both the same. Um, here's the second case where we subtract one and multiply by 0.75 and then add one. So 113 input, 85 output. And then the common case, again, 341 minus 1 divided by 4 equals 85. So that's the common case. So we have all the cases there. We have the common case twice, and we have the first case and the second case. That accounts for every single number. number and it accounts for convergence, and the convergence occurs for every number. So 167 and 85 are not special. This convergence occurs for every number. And we have the basis case, uh, which is input 5, output 1, input 1, output 1. Um, that's the basis case. And all the other cases build from this case. Now, so all numbers that are not multiples of 3 are convergent with respect to 1. So we, I just said that, but here's a... Another illustration, first case, and we're only considering odd to odd. These are odd even sequences, but we only care really about the odd to odd, which is um, m plus 1, 31, 32, multiplied by 1.5, and then I forgot to show the subtraction by 1, but that produces 47. And then if we want to use the even, even numbers as well, we see how it works. It works the same way. Um, in the common case, um, is um, 125 becomes 47, but you don't see that at all with the even odd sequence because we have this hidden 31. So the other, so the um, the first case, 31 is the first number in the sequence. In the, in the common case, 31 is hidden in the even odd sequence, but you understand that in both cases we get to 47. That's the key thing. And this is the second case. And again, we have a situation where the first number, 51, is hidden in the common case for the even odd sequence. 51 is hidden. But again, we get from 51 to 77, and we get from 205 to 77. So, the, so you know, this is the little bit of fairy dust that seems to elude mathematicians that there is this common case. It's just not visible, directly visible uh, to the human eye. Um, 205 to 77, wow, what a mystery.
What a mystery. This is the myth this is the mystery of a mathematician's are caught up in. I promise you, this is all it is. Otherwise they would have abandoned this conjecture years or decades ago. So sequences that begin with a multiple of three actually pose a bigger problem. Because um, if you wanted to really challenge yourself, you would say the such numbers could be infinite. Well, why could they be infinite? Because they cannot be the result of subtraction by one and division by four, which is the trick I've been using, this, this magic trick I've been using for the other sequences. Um, for, the, for the special case of, um, of multiples of three, and obviously they're not so special since every third number is a multiple of three, um, subtraction by one and division by four doesn't work. However, we can use what we already said. We can, they are all can be the result of multiplication by four and addition of one, the inverse, multiplication by four and addition to one. Uh, so that's the beauty thing, beauty part of this is that we can sort of coerce uh, the sequence to be divisible by four. Um, so in other words, we're multiplying it by four and adding one, and then we're going to do the opposite, the inverse. We're going to minus out one and divide by four. Now, in the odd sequences, this makes no difference at all. But it does make a difference in the even odd sequences. So the even odd sequences have essentially shot themselves in the foot um, by this special property that they see the they see the multiple of three in one direction, but they hide it in the other direction. Um, so so now we do have a common case for multiples of three. So the second case is in. It's only second, the second case because, actually, it's the first case, forgive me. Um, it's n plus 1 times 1 1.5, and then minus, minus 1. So 27. Uh, 27, input 27, output 82, division by 2, 41. This is uh, the even odd way of doing it. The odd only way of doing it is... 27 plus 1 is 28, multiplied by 1.5, minus 1 is 41. So we see we go straight from 27 to 41 in either case. Now, with the common case, we do not see that. We see, we see I mean, we see 109 and we see 40, 41, but we do not see 27. Now, that's an amazing fact because just by multiplying by four and adding one to 27, we have created a sequence that doesn't just go to 27. That wouldn't mean anything if it just went to 27 because that would just put us back to where we started. It actually takes us all the way to 41, which is the convergent number in the first case. So we do have a convergent, uh, a method of demonstrating convergence for multiples of three. We've, I've just done it for the case of 27 and 109. They both converge on 41. So that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. So they are con convergent sequences, actually the same sequence beginning with 82. And of course, 109 is not a multiple of three. Where does that take us? It takes us to the to the definitive statement that all sequences are finite with respect to one, including those that begin with multiples of three. Thank you.